Greetings, true believers! I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love. Who doesn't love the Hulk? Marvel's great green smashing machine has been keeping us entertained for decades. And even when he's not the star of the show, he's never far from trouble. Even when he's far from Earth. Which brings me to today's subject, Planet Hulk. Originally an event spanning Incredible Hulk issues number 92 to 105, Planet Hulk was adapted by Lionsgate Entertainment into an animated feature for DVD in 2010. In the comics, the story began with the Hulk battling a rogue AI on an orbiting space station, but none of this is mentioned in the feature. This, instead, is the meat of the tale. A tale of love, loss, rage, power, and freedom. So grab your popcorn and jam foam hands and get ready to witness the gladiatorial glory that is... Planet Hulk. Our story begins in space. Four of Earth's most powerful heroes have made the decision to send the Hulk into interplanetary exile. But when our Gamma Transformed Giant awakes, you're gonna be hearing it a lot, so you might as well get used to it. Hulk Smash. Now. I love a good smash as much as the next person, but the Hulk smashes the ship's guidance systems, sending the ship way off course, and far from the peaceful planet that the powerful minds intended. The Hulk ends up on the savage world of Sakaar. Hulk is scant seconds out of the wreckage of the shuttle before he is attacked and enslaved. He awakes in captivity, surrounded by aliens. After a brief team talk, we get straight into the gladiatorial action. But oh dear, their first opponents are Korg's own people. And worse, they make mincemeat of our heroes. Korg has seen enough. And all this time, Hulk and Meek have been forcing the arena gate. Until Hulk lays eyes on the Red King. One shots the next boss and promptly gets shut down. This is Kara the Old Strong. She's explained a lot more in depth in the comics, but all you really need to know is she's a shadow warrior and she guards the king. The Red King wants a piece of our hero, which is a bad idea at the best of times. Kara steps in to battle the Hulk for herself. She takes an instant dislike to our hero, which obviously means she's the love interest for this movie. But the Red King doesn't fight fair. And so this ragtag group of no-hopers swear an oath to each other and become... Warbound. Cue a round of flashbacks, even including the God of Thunder himself. The next battle arrives, and the Warbound are pitted against the Wilderbots. Wild robots from the plains. Not that they last very long in the face of a reinvigorated Hulk. And even after being swallowed by their greatest threat, the Eggbreaker, Hulk still comes out on top. Give him hell, green guy. That night, Kara goes to the Hulk. Cue another flashback as we discover the circumstances that gave her such a bad case of loyalty. Spikes. Mutative parasites from beyond the stars. The Red King saved a young carer from them. Or rather, his robot army did. His robot army saved you. It's not like he came in himself riding a white horse and brandishing a sword that flashes in the sun or anything and... Look, I'll spare you the rant. Let's just move on, let's move on. Round three, and the warbound face Beta Ray Bill. That defended Earth from a rampaging group of Cronins. Alongside Thor, of course. But when they retreated... Bill followed. To cut a long story short, Hulk wins. But the Red King has one final test for our gladiators. Kill a captured rebel, and they can go free. Beta Ray Bill's having none of it though, and shatters the obedience discs that the Warbound were fitted with. And so the Hulk is free. And that's it, isn't it? Not likely. No indeed, now begins the second part of our tale. The Warbound make for a rebel safe house, and are put up by a family friend of LOA. 
the rebel that they saved. But her family friend betrays the group. Meanwhile, Kara challenges the Hulk. The battle is interrupted, however, by the arrival of a spike shuttle. Kara departs to take care of the spike problem. The Hulk decides a fight's a fight and pitches in. And all at once, Kara discovers who the real monster is. Because the horrifying truth is that the Red King was in control of the spikes all along. Kara's allegiances are now reversed, and we're all set for our climax. The Warbound are returned to Crown City in chains. But of course, the Hulk's alive. Long story short, Hulk wins. And Kara delivers a deadly gift to her, King. <laughs> and so our movie ends with the people of Crown City cheering their new Green King. And that's it, isn't it? For the movie at least. The comics, however, go on to show us the rebuilding of the world and the tragic events that followed. So let's take a look at this interval of innocence as we dig into Incredible Hulk issues 103 to 105. It begins with a raid. Meek and his people storm the Senate and demand blood. Eloe Kaifi is with them, but oh dear. Eloe? Mother? Now there's an awkward family reunion. <laughs> the Emperor was insane. He had to go. But we are still Blood Imperials. This world belongs to us, not the Bucks. The stage is set for an old-fashioned grudge match. But there's a twist. Fight! 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 The Hulk challenges both sides, at once. Come on! Come on! This fight is over. I'll break your brothers, or I'll kill you myself. You'll play nicely or I'll bang your heads together. <laughs> you tell him, Hulk. With all that out of the way, Hulk takes care of the old strong for his queen. I'm Bruce. He wanted you to see all of him. All of us. All of me. Well, hang on then. Shouldn't that include the Grey Hulk as well? And so, Hulk's marriage to care of the old strong is finalised. Issue 104 begins with the Hulk being reminded of who he was. May you finally find peace. Naturally, this perturbs him, and in his discomfort, he leaps across the car to the valley where he bled. This is now a farm for fruits and vegetables. The Hulk finally seems to be settled. So, of course, things instantly take a turn for the serious. Stupid Pione! Humans! Issue 105 begins in the wild, as Archie explains the new state to the Wildbots. Archie is another member of the Warbound, but dies early in the movie. But then news of the explosion in Crown City reaches him, and all hell breaks loose. Short version is, the blast shatters a tectonic plate and sunders the planet Sakaar. Terrible loss of life ensues. Luckily, there's a stone spaceship on hand to collect up the survivors. But oh dear, the Hulk has lost his queen. With your bomb, you just made me stronger. The strongest one there is. And so our comic ends with Hulk leaving the dead world of Sakaar behind and heading for Earth. But that's another story. Anyway, that was Planet Hulk. And I'm definitely going to put the movie into the House of Love. The comic, though? Not so much. The Hulk explodes off the page in grand style, smashing and bashing with all the fury we've come to expect from the not-so-jolly green giant. And while one might argue that the story was paper thin, or that they liked this story better when it was called Gladiator, I like Gladiator better when it's called Planet Hulk. It's a straightforward balls-to-the-wall action adventure that only animation can give. And it is glorious! 
that's not to say that the source material is so much worse. Far from it. Pack wrote a solid story that obviously holds up to adaptation. But the comics tend to sag and decompression sets in around the middle. Coupled to the fact that it sets up World War Hulk, which was cathartic at the time but just looks to be a cop-out ending now. And you can see why I prefer the movie to the book. Still, as I say, it's a good solid story and definitely worth picking up in trade. So thanks for watching. But we're not done with the Mean Green Smashing Machine just yet. Join me in two weeks when we ask, isn't it time you gave Ang Lee's Hulk another chance?